Hi everybody, my name is Stuart Hayden, I'm founder of Storm Beach where I specialise in authentic leadership, keep myself busy as a coach, facilitator, consultant, speaker and author and the reason I'm here today with um, this quick overview is to tap into my first book which is called It's Not About the Coach and for me what I want to do in this short video is just present to you the purpose of this book and why it fits well within the world of sport. So, the book itself goes to answer one overarching question which I've got written down here, which is about are you coachable? Okay, So that's where the book fits in the overall kind of sporting terms, looking at players and athletes and asking the question, are you coachable? Okay, And of course if you are coachable then you can go on and sort of adjust that question to think about how coachable are you and the book can actually give you some ideas of how coachable you are. But the real starting point is yes or no, are you coachable? Okay. So that's come where the book is coming from, and I suppose the reason we, we're looking at this particular area is many people aren't coachable, or perhaps if they are, they haven't got all the skills necessary to be an effective coachy player, listener, whatever it might be, and sometimes they're not going to get the best value from their coaches. Okay? So you might have a world-class coach, fantastic coach, motivated experience, etc., etc., but if the players aren't up for it, in terms of being coached, then you're not going to get the most from that relationship. Okay? And there's loads of coaching badges and awards and accreditations and qualifications and training for coaches. What I'm trying to do with my book, which is really one of the first books on the market, is to think about the other person. Because it's great elevating the skills and prowess of the coach, which we need, we expect that in sport, but also the player, athlete, also has to think about how they absorb, listen, reflect and take on that great coaching if it's, if it's available. Okay? And there's a bit of a proverb which I, I like playing with a little bit is that if the coachee isn't ready, then the coach won't appear. Okay? So if the coachee, the player athlete, isn't ready for coaching, then that fantastic coach won't appear. And you can think of times in your life perhaps where there were coaches around, but if you weren't ready, if you weren't up for it, for it then they really, really didn't see those people, they didn't really step out and you weren't ready for that. Okay? So let's have a little look delve where the book itself, it's not about the coach, where it actually kind of fits in with the overall portfolio of someone who works in sport. Um, we've got a fairly typical model here, the way I like to def define sport and trying to say, well, what is it? What, what do I need to work on as a player, as an athlete? It comes down to three things for me, and of course, when you generalize, there's a risk of sort of leaving something out, but let's go for a quick generalization. You've got skills, strength and conditioning, and the psychology, okay? This book is very much about the psychology of sport. Okay? So we've got skills, strength conditioning and the psychology. Now if we look at these different aspects, what we want is all three of those elements working really well together. Okay? Like any team sport, if you've only got one or two of these aspects working well, then you're not going to reach your potential. Okay? Let's have a quick look at that before we go into the more psychology side of things. Um, so let's take a team or an individual that you know, doesn't perhaps have great skill level, so let's take that one out, but great strength and conditioning, great physicality, great endurance, great speed, whatever it might be, and excellent psychology in terms of the way they think, plan, and do. Okay? That kind of culture or person or team is, I'd describe it as a worker, or someone who's just brilliantly fit, okay? great determination, whatever that might be, and a real workhorse. You can think of people in you know, high profile sports, and as soon as I try and throw one up for you, you'll probably disagree anyway, but there's certainly individuals and teams that demonstrate a lot of that, but perhaps their skill level isn't that high. Okay? And of course without that, they're missing out on you know, potentially some of their potential. The other aspect then, if we take out, um, let's take out strength and conditioning. Okay? So let's look at just skills and psychology. So someone or a team's skill level is very, very high, and the psychology is also really well developed as well in terms of that winning thinking psychology. Okay? Often, you know, they might be the smaller, lighter, shorter, maybe not that fit, player, team. i describe, if the last one was more of a workhorse, this is more of my genius really, that genius who without perhaps some of the physical prowess can still, with a very high skill and psychology, do very well in their sport and discipline. Okay? But again, there's a good example where people, teams, have been in that kind of genius place, but developed that fitness, that size, that endurance, and then certainly that full potential comes, comes together. Bottom one is where we're going to focus on here, and the reason 
Or I suppose one of the reasons why the book came, came to me in terms of uh, for it to be written was that if you've got an individual or a team that has high skill, high strength and conditioning, okay, but is not coachable, the psychology is a bit wayward, doesn't really apply too much to the mental approach to the game, this person up here, which we all love to watch, to me, take this out, this person or team is the maverick. Amazingly skillful, great skills, um, strength and conditioning, but just is not coachable, can't be tamed, if you like. That, that maverick that just can't be tamed. Like I'm thinking of them now, but again, I don't want to share them because it, it sometimes divides opinion and creates uh, more harm than good. Okay? We love watching them, but we just wish they'd just knuckle down a bit more and perhaps bring a bit more discipline. And ultimately, for the book, be coached, be coachable. You know, are you coachable, coachable? Is this person or team, are you able to coach them, to get the most from them? Now, I'll put in one little apology here. There are some people in teams, I think, that aren't coachable. They're so far off from being on this book and this planet. Actually, that's why they're so successful, in a way. If you try to tame them and bring the discipline of psychology and coaching, then in a way, sometimes you take away that skill and strength and endurance. So there are times to say, no, this person, I just need to give them space. Maybe not now, but maybe in the future, you need to think about them, you know, adapting to your coaching. Okay, but sometimes, you know, some of those great mavericks out there, they're better off just doing their own thing. And you think, oh, well, only they took more advice from the coach and more disciplined. Yes, I do think that's true, but I also think sometimes if you take that too far, you take that away. You know, if you overcoach, obviously, sometimes you start chipping into this. You know, if you spend too much time in the gym, sometimes you take away from the other areas. So, you know, it's a recipe, it's a blend, it's a fusion between all three. Right, so this book fits firmly with the psychology aspect of sport. It's not about strength and conditioning or skills. It's about how you think and feel when you're working with a coach, either on a one-to-one -one basis, which can be quite intense because that's one-to-one, -one, quite stretching, or of course it can be in a team environment which has a little bit um, less intensity to that arrangement just from purely the numbers and dynamics.